Hey noble ones, welcome to Metatron's Academy, the channel where we explore how to learn languages in the most fun and effective way possible. Now today I've got a question for you. Do you fit in this description? You really like the idea of learning a second language. You want to become fluent. So you start studying it, you put effort into it, but you don't get the results and so you quit. Then a year passes by, maybe two years, and you look at yourself and, and you're like, why did I give up? Perhaps now I would be fluent, let me try it again. So you start again, you get a book, you start watching content, but you still don't make any progress regardless of hours and time and focus that you put into the language. Then you give up again. Rinse and repeat. Well, if this is you, then it could also be possible that you ask yourself the following question. Is it something wrong with me? Maybe it's just me. I'm not good at learning languages. Other people I see that, you know, they make YouTube videos, they speak so fluently, they say they did it so fast, and yet for me, uh, it doesn't matter how much time and effort I put into it, I don't understand when people speak. So maybe it's just me. I'm not cut for learning languages. If you told yourself that, you are wrong. Let me tell you why. First and foremost, please keep in mind that you are not alone in this. A lot of people do this, and I myself, with one of the many languages that I've studied, I did have this experience too. So asking yourself, is something wrong with me, is the wrong question. The question you need to ask is, why did I quit so many times in the first place? And there are four points that I'd like to use throughout this video to help you figure out why you quit, so that next time you pick up a language, you won't quit again, and you will 100% reach your fluency goals. So problem number one is incorrect goals. And this is probably not even your fault. There's so much marketing out there where people saying, oh, I picked up a language in two weeks, so I got fluent in six weeks, how to become fluent in just a month. And this is just that, marketing. Those are lies to either sell your book, sell you something, or get views. It's clickbait. Unfortunately, what that does is that it creates incorrect expectations. So you think, hey, if someone did it in, a, in two weeks, I can definitely do it in a month. Reach fluency on your own without moving to the country in one month. Not gonna happen. Another thing is that it's important not to compare ourselves to other people in the sense that you might be better than other people because you're faster at learning something, uh, but maybe in this specific situation, in the language you're choosing, perhaps you're comparing yourself with someone who is either an extremely talented individual, which does not represent the norm, or someone who is in a completely different position. Someone who has access to, for example, natives 24 seven, or someone who has already been to the country and spent time there. Or even worse, someone who is learning the language you are targeting as their fourth language, which makes it a lot easier. So setting goals is absolutely crucial. You have to have goals, but you cannot start with a massive goal and not give yourself enough time to reach that goal because then you'll fail it and then you'll feel that the only thing you can do is quit. Instead, absolutely have one major goal. For example, I want to learn a thousand words in this language. That's a great goal. It's not fluency yet, because generally speaking, fluency is around 2000. But if you know very well, at least a thousand words in a language, that's a big goal. And you need to give yourself a realistic goal depending on how much time you can spend. And that's in fact another point in connection to what we were saying before. Perhaps you're comparing yourself to someone who is a full time student. Perhaps you're not. Maybe you have to work and therefore you can't dedicate as much time as they do. So obviously the time is going to stretch. Now, of course, words alone is not enough as a goal to learn a language. There are many other goals. You want to improve your pronunciation. You want to watch a certain amount of videos. You want to complete a course. There are many goals that you can create. Write them down, but give yourself enough time to reach those goals. Once you have the big goals, then start making smaller goals. For example, if the big goal is, I want to know extremely well and master a thousand words, great. Now make a smaller one, 500, and I'll make a smaller one, 100. And then make the minute one, 10. Start from the bottom, and every time you achieve a goal, make a mark. Write it down. Today, I feel confident that I know 100 words really well. Of course, I would suggest you kind of have maybe 15 adjectives, 30 verbs, 40 nouns. And of course, I will make a dedicated video on how to select the words that would be more appropriate to learn at first in terms of priority. But do absolutely create smaller goals that are realistic and once you achieve them, then you move to the harder goal and harder goal in a progressive scale. The second problem, the second point that sometimes people have when it comes to language learning is the need for constant gratification. 
And don't get me wrong, I think one of the most beautiful aspects of language learning, particularly when compared to other forms or other fields, is the fact that you do get a lot of gratification in the sense that, I mean, someone who studies mathematics, it doesn't really happen very often that you do an equation and everyone is like, oh my god, you did such a good job with that equation. It doesn't happen as often. Whereas with languages, uh, whenever you say something in the language you've spoken, people will celebrate you and it happens constantly. Now, this is great, but it can backfire in the sense that if you are in a position where you don't really have many opportunities to confront yourself with natives or with people that are also studying the same subject as you, then you could feel a lack of gratification, which could make you feel like, well, I'm not really learning much then because nobody's telling me that I'm doing good. You don't necessarily need people to tell you, but I understand how, particularly in the language field, because you see other people getting all of that gratification in the comments, for example, of popular YouTube videos, that you would also like to partake in that. Absolutely you will, but once again, remember that you can't get instant gratification in the sense that you put literally 20 minutes into the language and you already want people to speak highly of your knowledge and language skill and ability. Give it time and the rewards will come. Another problem is often the wrong environment in the sense that we put ourselves in a position of disadvantage when our goal is, for example, to learn fluency in French or Italian, but you remain in a fully anglophone environment. Now, clearly the easiest way to break through this problem is to move to the country where you want to live. But as I said on my previous videos, I usually suggest people to do that after at least one year into the language so that you don't go there completely oblivious of what's going on around you. But it is also important that for some people they might not have the financial ability to move to another country, maybe they don't have the connections, or perhaps you've got a job here, you've got a family, you're going to university for something else, or you literally cannot go. That doesn't mean that you can't learn, it just means that you might have to put more work into creating an environment that I like calling the simulation theory, and I will make a dedicated video to that. But just to give you a little hint here, before the actual dedicated video, what I do is that I try and recreate the same experience I had personally when I moved to England to learn English and when I moved to Japan to learn Japanese. Having had both experiences and having reaped the rewards of those experiences, I've also found that with the, all the other languages that I've picked up, even though I didn't actually move to those countries, I could still recreate the same type of surrounding and information. Early on in your adventure to learn a new language, make sure that you change the games you play in your target language. Change your phone language, change your language on your computer. Of course, make sure that you remember where the menu section is, just memorize it, where you can return to your own language if you feel lost. So memorize that before you do that. Also start replacing your entertainment in, in language entertainment. So watch movies in language, watch stuff in language as much as possible. And if you're learning a language with a completely different alphabet, it's a good idea to also sort of visually surround yourself with posters, game covers, magazines and novels in that language. Last but not least, the last point is in fact, it connects to this one, and it's insufficient stimuli. Another problem that often brings people down in the sense that they choose to quit their language study and uh, journey is because they don't feel it's fun. They get bored, they don't want to do it, maybe they wake up that morning when you were supposed to study and you're like, you know what, I just don't want to do it or that, I don't care. Usually the reason for that is not that you really lost interest in the language, it's that you lost interest in the method you're using to study the language. It is absolutely necessary, and I'm adamant about this, that you have fun as you study. Study should never, not even a second, should study be boring as watching the grass grow. So another thing that might have brought you to the decision of quitting is because you weren't doing things that you enjoyed. So for example, find other creators that make it fun, watch videos, watch classes. If you're into football, watch football matches in the language. If you're into martial arts, watch martial arts about that language and that culture, of course. But of course, I'll go into the details of the best resources and most fun resources for learning a language on a dedicated video. I hope that this was useful. Thank you very much for visiting Metronons Academy.